I am Dr. Shurjil and you are watching my YouTube channel. Uh, as we all know that we are passing through Corona pandemic and uh, one of the main treatment of Corona is uh, steroids. And uh, we all know that uh, steroids, uh, a life saving uh, drug, uh, can also have consequences. So, this uh, 40 years old uh, male patient presented uh, to me recently recovered from corona with uh, decrease of vision in the left eye and when i checked his fundus uh, there was a dome-shaped elevation of the macula and uh, his vision was uh, 618 and uh, I diagnosed him as a case of a central serous uh, chorioretinopathy. Now though we think uh, that we have got a perception that uh, central serous chorioretinopathy is a rare disease but even before pandemic after <clears throat> age related macular degeneration diabetic retinopathy and branch retin retinal vein occlusion it's the fourth commonest or retinopathy or maculopathy that occurs <clears throat> and just imagine that uh, with uh, too much use of steroids uh, Steroid is one of the main uh, risk factors and precipitator of uh, CSR. So, how much it would have been increased? So, I got this uh, first case, uh, and uh, today our topic is <coughs> uh, central serous chorioretinopathy. So, I will talk in detail about it. Uh, so, first. CSR was identified by Von Graffy in 1866 and at that almost 150 years ago he named it as central recurrent retinitis. So just look at uh, the intelligence of Von Graffy that 150 years ago when a very crude uh, instruments were present uh, to observe the retina how accurate uh, his diagnosis was that uh, the disease is a central definitely on the macula fovea recurrent it then later Gauss in 1967 named it as idiopathic central serous chorioretinopathy and still the name is same so what is this <clears throat> actually serous macular detachment occurs due to retinal pigment epithelial dysfunction and there is a role of hyperpermeable choroidal capillaries now how the patient present like my patient uh, he said that uh, my vision is decreased and I uh, from left eye the images look smaller so that that is the symptom which is called micropsia when the things are perceived smaller than actual size then the other symptom uh, with which patients can come is metamorphopsia metamorphopsia means distorted images then the most common refractive error is hyperopia because uh, general because you know that a fluid accumulates um, under the retina and there is a dome shaped elevation so axial length becomes shortened and hyperopia should occur but i have seen patients uh, <clears throat> with myopia as well then there is a central scotoma symptom that patients say that uh, there is a black dot in my vision so central scotoma symptom there is a reduced contrast sensitivity and color saturation so these are all the macular function tests uh, which are reduced vision is in routine between 66 up to 660 
and typically it occurs in males my patient was male as well in their 20s to 50s who show acute or subacute central vision loss females can get csr as well but females are older at presentation in their 30s <clears throat> Now, how to diagnose CSR? Well, it is uh, diagnosed clinically on dilated fundoscopy. You will see a dome-shaped elevation of the macula without hemorrhages, um, and it can be accompanied with RPE detachments in 60% of the cases. So, whenever you have got a suspicion of uh, CSR, uh, you should also look for RPE detachments. The pigment epithelial detachment uh, may touch the posterior aspect of the retina and uh, there is usually a leak at this side. So that's uh, for a management point of view, PED <coughs> diagnosis is also crucial. The inner surface of the retina may show a localized depression at this side. Macular RP mottling can be found in cases of recurrent or chronic CSR. Now, what are the risk factors for CSR? Well, type A personality, the people, uh, type A personality means that the people who, who have got mood swings, they can get agitated by anything. So, type A personality, systemic steroid use, ecstasy drugs like MDMA or sildenafil, infections like helicobacter pylori, post lasik surgery, post rhinoplasty, <clears throat> sleep apnea syndrome, male gender, pregnancy, antibiotic use, alcohol use and untreated hypertension, they are all in the risk factors. So the most common is steroids. Our patient also got steroids for corona, so both endogenous and exogenous steroids can cause CSR. <clears throat> CSR's association with having a type A personality seems logical because type A personality uh, people they get a lot of stress and in stress glucocorticoids are released and endogenous steroids then lead to CSR. So, <clears throat> another association is uh, Helicobacter pylori infection and uh, many studies have found that uh, H. pylori infection, if you treat H. pylori, the CSR also improves. So, definitely there is some association. Then Viagra and uh, MDMA. Now, what can be the differential diagnosis of uh, definitely any pathology at the macula can come in the differential diagnosis like a CNV, a myopic CNV, neovascular AMD, CNV in age-related macular degeneration, then polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy, PCV, choroidal tumor, hypertensiochoroidopathy, choroidopathy due to multiple myeloma, or retinal vein occlusion, macular vein occlusion, posterior scleritis, Harada disease, VKH, optic nerve pit with serous macular detachment, mm, macular rigmatogenous retinal detachment. So these all can come in the differential diagnosis of. Now, the tests which we do in uh, CSR are OCT, fundus angiography, ICGA, OCTA and they not only help in the di confirming the diagnosis but also in determination of staging and follow up of the disease. On FA you can get a classical smoke stack pattern um, or ink blot pattern. And one of the important feature of CSR on OCT is a greater than average choroidal thickness. So, and then you can get a simple CSR or CSR with PED and recurrent CSR or acute CSR. And the management like this patient, this patient had not 
no history previously and it was associated with steroids now steroids are stopped but uh, <clears throat> still uh, the after effects are there so observational therapy is the gold standard in the acute csr if there is no foveal leakage if there is no choroidal new vascularization and in majority of the cases spontaneous resolution of the neurosensory retinal detachment and improvement of the visual equity do occur but definitely there is some defect in the contrast and color that remains so uh, and what are the other options well the other options are uh, you have got uh, medical treatment therapies, uh, MRAs, uh, mineralocorticoid uh, receptor antagonists, uh, you have got laser, uh, you have got uh, photodynamic therapy. So, <coughs> we have got uh, algorithms, uh, and one uh, that was used in its treatment was pyronolactone. It is a potassium sparing diuretic uh, and indicated for the management of primary hyperaldosteronism and all the edema related conditions like congestive, cardiac failure, cirrhosis of the liver, nephrotic syndrome and also indicated renone was created to lessen the side effects of spironolactone. It is a selective aldosterone antagonist uh, but <clears throat> it is less effective in CSR as compared to spironolactone. Spironolactone has a 40 fold higher binding affinity in comparison with aplirinone. And uh, the dosage is 50 mg daily of both spironolactone and aplirinone. So, how to treat? We have got a treatment algorithm, uh, first obtain case history and ask for modifiable risk factors like if you find steroids, stop the steroids, stop all the risk factors and then also on history ask whether it is a recurrent disease or acute. If acute, my neater observation is the gold standard and if the case does not resolve in 4 months, uh, proceed to chronic staging. Now, we give treatment in chronic CSR. Chronic CSR is the CSR that lasts for more than four months. So, in chronic CSR, we give aplirinone and monitor for one month. If improvement is observed, continue the therapy until the macular detachment results. And if improvement is not observed, then switch to a more potent uh, spironolactone and continue therapy for one month and uh, see if improvement is uh, coming or not if improvement is not observed then you can go towards the photodynamic therapy or laser in the case of a localized non-central leakage you can apply a focal uh, micropulse uh, laser uh, Previous lasers were harmful uh, with collateral damage, but nowadays micropulse laser uh, cause little collateral damage and are highly effective to uh, patch the leaking point. Uh, in the case of diffuse central leakage, uh, apply photodynamic therapy and uh, if there is a suspicion of CNV formation, then consider treatment with anti-VEGF. Uh, so, in acute CSR, you have to just observe um, if the CSR does not improve with the observation, um, then you can call it chronic. Uh, in chronic, you can start with medical therapy if there is no improvement with medical therapy and you have got a leaking point. Um, extra foveal then you can apply micropulse laser if there is a central leakage uh, you can apply photodynamic therapy and if there is cnv formation then you can use anti vegf as well so that was all about uh, uh, central serous chorioretinopathy and there is a surge due to steroid use uh, 
the other disease uh, which was very rare uh, before uh, corona pandemic uh, but now we see in routine is uh, mucormycosis mucormycosis